Welcome back to the tutorial DVD, next chapter here. Um, what we're going to be talking about in this chapter is what you need to do to prepare to use IMU. There are a few things that you need to prepare to get started to use IMU before you can even take it out of the box. Uh, the very first thing you're going to need is a Windows-based PC. Um, some people ask us um, how powerful the PC has to be. And really what I say is that uh, these days, you know, any computer that you can go down to the computer store and lay your hands on is going to be powerful enough to run the software. IMU actually doesn't really take up a lot of CPU power. What does take power is the when you create some dazzling video displays that we'll get into in a, in a chapter down the road here. Um, but, it, you know, for, for just kind of ordinary run-of-the-mill displays, most people do. Just a regular old PC will do it. Just, you know, don't have to be a... Uh, uh, doesn't have to be the, the top of the line PC. So that's the very first thing you're going to need is Windows based PC. The next thing you need is something I'm holding in my hand here. It's called a SIM card. This is, um, it says ATT wireless, but it could be from any um, vendor. And uh, this card is um, inserted into a phone, into a GSM type phone. Um, some people actually, uh, particularly a mobile DJ, what they'll wind up doing is taking the SIM phone, t taking the SIM card out of their phone and using it with IMU. This little card here gives uh, IMU the phone number. You know, you might think about it is people are going to be sending text messages to a phone number. How do you get that phone number? Well, that phone number comes on this card. And where you get this card is from your friendly neighborhood cell phone supplier. You go down to your singular AT&T, T-Mobile store, and uh, you tell them that you already have a device that can receive the SIM card, and all you need is the SIM card. One of the things you're going to need uh, to get this SIM card is a mobile calling plan. Um, these plans come in, you know, usually you pay some sort of a monthly fee. Uh, usually it's on the neighborhood of $20 to $30 a month. Um, preferably you get a plan that has unlimited text messaging and if you're going to use um, you know if you're not going to use the sim from your phone but you're going to buy one specifically for this purpose you actually don't need in, in as part of this calling plan you don't need any kind of voice at all because this is strictly a text messaging application there's no voice so you could communicate that to the to the salesperson and just say look I only need text messaging T-Mobile has a plan called the Sidekick plan. A Sidekick is a small little PDA device that, um, that can receive and send text messages and has internet access and email and what have you. Uh, you can get a Sidekick plan from T-Mobile with unlimited text messaging for probably around $20, $25 a month. Um, so that's, that's an, the next thing you need. Basically, first thing is a Windows-based PC. Next thing is the SIM card. And probably the last thing you need is a way to connect the PC to whatever kind of video you're going to be using. Um, here what I have is this little BenQ video projector. Just a little 2500 lumen projector. You can see how small it is. It fits in a very small little laptop type carry-on bag. Very convenient. Um, for some people and applications, Treju application, this is perfect. Um, other type of applications you might be using a plasma monitor. And in yet other applications, you might have video projectors that are just regular old, what we call composite video. Uh, particularly if you're a mobile DJ, I, I like to use the term, you're at the mercy, oftentimes, of another provider that provides the video. You provide the DJ services, and somebody else provides the video. Oftentimes, you, you can't really, you're not really in a position to dictate what it is that you need to them and you need to be able to kind of respond to, to what they have brought to that particular gig at that time. Um, one thing that can help you to respond is a box that we have down here. This box is made by TV1. It's called the Eclipse. Um, and there is, TV1 makes a couple of different variations of this. Um, but they range in price from around $200 all the way up to $750. What this box allows you to do is connect the VGA output from the PC 
to this box, and in this box will give you composite video and VGA output and S video all at the same time. And so, um, uh, JR and um, John DeSalvo and I did a gig uh, for University High School one time, and once again, this is we're speaking from experience here. We get there, video guy supplies one thing, and he, he said, he swore up and down, we're going to have S video, S video. Got there? No S video. The laptop itself actually has S video. And that's another thing I'm going to talk about here in a second. Something that would be good for the computer to have. Um, um, so, so, so again, kind of uh, summarizing here, three things you're going to need. Uh, Windows-based PC, the SIM card, and some way of connecting to the video. Uh, if your video is a plasma monitor or one of these, that connection can probably be made, made directly with a connector right here on the side of the laptop. The so VGA output goes right to the VGA input. If you have one of this, you can get the, um, the highest quality video. Um, as I say, this laptop and many laptops also have S video output, and uh, that's pretty good. Um, now, one thing about the computer, the Windows based PC, if you're in a club, oftentimes it is a desktop PC. If you're a mobile DJ, oftentimes it is a, a laptop. If you're a TV studio, it's more of a server type computer. But in any case, one thing you're going to need is the, the laptop or the PC to have dual monitor output. And let me show you what dual monitor output is and what that means. What we have here is we have the PC running. I'm going to right click the mouse onto the desktop, select properties. This little dialog box comes up here, and I'm going to click Settings. What you should see is a picture of two monitors, one and two. And if you've got that, then the PC has dual monitor output. Um, if you don't see that, then you're going to have to talk to your computer supplier, your IT people, um, trusted friend with technical knowledge of how to get dual monitor output from your PC. Um, most laptops already have dual monitor. Most newer desktops also have a dual monitor. Um, if you don't have dual monitor capability and you have a desktop, oftentimes you could buy a special kind of video board to plug into the desktop to get that. So this really isn't a, a stumbling block, but it's something you've got to have before you can even get going. Uh, so, so as you can see, this laptop has dual monitor output. The second monitor output isn't really enabled right now, and that's one of the things we need to do as a preparatory step. What you do is click on number two here. You see it comes surrounded by blue, and there's a little checkbox here that says extend my Windows desktop onto this monitor. Uh, click that, and some people click apply, then OK. Usually I just click OK. And I've just done it, and with that, what you see up here on this video output that we're coming. This is now the second monitor output. And if I take a window here, like for example, a Windows Explorer, and if I drag it over here, you can see what that means. This PC now has two monitor outputs. One that we call the primary monitor output, which is the one that we usually use here, you know, connected to the PC or to the laptop. And the second monitor output, which kind of is off to the right here, it's a virtual output. The PC is generating that, sending it to the video projector, and it's also sending it out to S video port. So, like I say, had had we actually uh, um, been able to rely on the words of that video guy who said he'd supply S video, no problem. We just plug it right into the laptop, and away we go. But uh, like I say, oftentimes. Um, one of the things we practice a lot here at Pangolin is the Boy Scouts motto. Uh, the Boy Scouts motto is be prepared. And Pangolin's actually got a little addendum to that. Have a backup plan. Um, that's what this little box here helps you to do. This is your backup plan. So no matter what, like I say, it's like, you know, they got composite, S-video, VGA, you know, whatever they've got, that little box can help you to be prepared. So, so that's about it for the preparing to use IMU and now we'll go on to the next chapter.